Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials by Dev Dojo. So in this video we are going to get the enemy by ID. So for that let's uh, add another method here. Uh, let's call public find uh, it will return a response entity with an enemy inside and this will be find by ID. I personally don't like to use get by ID uh, I avoid use get as much as possible because uh, it can get confusing for people that are starting with Java for junior developers that are relying on the Java convention names. So uh, there are a couple of things that we should uh, see here. The first one is that this is not allowed. Remember, when we don't have the path, we only have the get mapping it means that it will be automatically executed every time we execute a get request to this endpoint the problem is now we have two so spring will not know which one should be executed so it will not let the application start so for that we have to add one path here and now the following the rest principles when you are trying to get a resource by its id you usually type localhost slash the plural name here of your endpoint and then slash followed by the ID. Once we have this, this is called path variable. We have to add here one annotation called path variable and then the type that we want. Since the name, I think it is uh, started on Spring Boot 5. Uh, since the name here ID is the same name as here, we don't have to tell the path variable something like this. So if the names were different, we have to tell, hey, this ID is coming from this ID and just add into this variable. Okay, now we need to find the resource. So let's find here. Since these are Primitive, we can do equals equals and then uh, we find the first or and here it's something really uh, complicated because several people they have several different opinions about it what should you return if the resource was not found the problem is when you return 404 it can be several different things for example, it means that the it can be like the URL does not exist and someone is trying to execute a request or resource that simply doesn't exist. Or your resource, your URL exists, but in this case the anime was not found. So it's really complicated. Uh, you will see people saying, hey, we should return a bad request 400 because uh, you cannot execute a request to an ID just by luck. You need to actually know um, that ID prior to that request. So it means that if someone just typed an ID at the URL, yeah, it's a bad request. They should know the, the ID. Well, uh, honestly, for me, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you keep the same pattern everywhere. So here, if you return 404 for this enemy, for any other class that you are not, that you are not going to find the resource, you should also return 404. Um, let's keep 404 here so people won't kill me. Response status exception. This, uh, I think it's uh, this class was introduced on Spring 5. HTTP status not found, and then we can give like a nice message: a student not found. Okay, so we do have here in case uh, the student my right? student enemy. So in case the enemy is was not found is not found we are going to return this exception but if the enemy is there enemy found misclick enemy found we are going to return a new response entity with this enemy and you don't have this new right here So looks like uh, we're getting there. So we do have this thing. Let's add to dictionary. Okay, so what we are doing here, every time 
I trigger a request to slash enemies slash NID. This method will be executed. Spring will automatically get the number and add here to this um, variable, and then we will do the business logic right here. Uh, let's try. Let's start the, the application, and let's go back here. Enemies, and then slash one. We do have a result. We can do the same. Three. What happens if we slash four, and we have white label on our page? So this is the default page from Spring Boot. We can't uh, trigger trigger a couple of things here from uh, the application dot properties. So for example, what I would like you to understand is that this 404, it's coming with a message, enemy not found here and here. But sometimes the stack trace uh, is not, uh, should not be exposed externally and this can be fixed by changing one property. I'm not going to use application dot properties. Let's change this, its name to application dot yaml because it's 2020. And then we are going to change the, the property. So we do have a couple of properties here. Uh, we have three options actually for this property server error, server error includes stack trace. If we add never and the uh, I'm not sure if we need a, a refresh on it. I lost my configuration again. Let's uh, check the target folder classes application.tml. Hmm, so it looks like uh, it's there. Maybe we don't have to. Yes, we don't have. So by saying never include stack trace, this white uh, label on our page won't display anything. If we use the default that's always, uh, not here, you will see the same page. But uh, one interesting one, it's on trace param. So by doing this, if we add here uh, trace equals true, and then you have the result. If you tell false, you don't get. And if you don't send anything, it's considered false. So since we are at the development stage, let's leave this as always. And this is the first property that we have inside our application.yaml. Uh, be careful, this comes from Python. So if you do have something like this, it will not work. You have to be careful with the spaces between each one of them. So if you don't feel comfortable, just go to application.properties and the properties would be exactly like it, it is displayed here. Okay, so I think uh, that's everything that I had to tell you. So this is how we get uh, resources by ID using path variable. So uh, I think that's enough for this video. Let's uh, move on. See you in the next video.